Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Woolly Thistle Shopcast. Uh, this is episode 218. I'm your host Corinne, this is my co-host Maggie and we are here to talk about all things Woolly and Woolly Thistle. Um, and yeah, how are you doing? What's been going on? Um, I'm good. I'm good. I'm actually back from a little wee trip. Yes, a wee um, trip. A, a wee, wee trip. trip. I got a wee bit longer. Yeah, I got a wee bit extended um, <laughs> due to cancelled flights and snow. Yeah. Um, but it was good. Yeah. Was, we, my husband and I and our daughter, our youngest daughter, went down to Florida and spent an extended weekend uh, with our in-laws celebrating anniversaries. And February is a lovely time to go there. Oh, celebrating anniversaries. It is, anniversaries. yeah. So we, we got married. Up here, you often get the sort of side-eyed when you got married in February. Um, <laughs> but in Florida, it was lovely, um, both on our wedding day and this past weekend. So yeah. It was really nice. But then we had a huge storm in Boston Yeah, area. Boston and Connecticut got hammered. Mm. So um, our we flew into Boston. Um, and the day um, after, yeah, yeah. So it yeah. was that that flight got canceled, and well, I'm um, so glad to have you back, though. Thank yes, you. It's good to be missed. back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Life is good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So good. Well, glad you had a good time. Yeah. I'm actually taking next week off, mm -hmm. which I'm kind of you know nervous sighted about. <laughs> I'm only nervous because I'm such. I think I'm such a worker bee. It's kind of like oh, it's been a whole week off. No being involved in anything but it's good i'm going to take my kids down to new york city again great yeah and we've yeah, got tickets yeah. we get tickets for hamilton nice yeah uh, be yeah my son is like uh, but that's okay he'll yeah. he'll enjoy it and uh yeah so we're going to stay right in midtown this time where it's all happening and uh Fun. yeah i'm looking forward to that so yes welcome to us we're the woolly thistle uh, where we sell woolly wool from or the sea for the most part, usually from the UK and Europe. And we love uh, natural, uh, close to the sheep, close to the place it came from. Usually non super wash. Yes, non super wash yeah. yarns that just smell wonderful, have a tactile uh, difference from each other, and there's just a whole sort of adventure to be had with your mm -hmm. fingers. Uh, with different different yarns and that's what we love to do so if you're at all interested in that let us guide you we are here for that and there is a huge journey of uh, real enjoyment to be had yeah yeah so that's what we do and this is our shop cast where we usually blather on like we're doing <laughs> and then we might show you some stuff that's new in the shop or what have you what we're knitting on and things like that yeah. Maggie why don't you tell us what you're wearing Oh, I am wearing my Vanilla Fluff, which is one of your designs, mm -hmm. um, and it is knit with Rama Fennel Garn, held with some mohair. And it looks so fluffy. Um, I've been wearing it a lot. I actually gave it a wash recently, yeah. so I tend to not wash, like many of us. I tend yeah. to not overwash yeah. my woolens. I just air them out after yeah. wearing. Um, but this one was, I've, I hadn't worn it, or I had been wearing it a lot, and um, figured, I'm like, you know, I've got washed it a lot of time <laughs> so i gave it a nice wash and it did it just it kind of freshens it up just it up a little it up a little bit it was yeah. still looking good before but yeah you know. it looks fabulous yeah i really i really like it this year i've been styling it over like a shirt this shirt yeah. has elephants um, oh that's so cute <laughs> and um yeah it's just nice and cozy it is very cold outside today yeah so this was nice a good and warm. choice yeah for sure yeah. and you know the reason why in case people are like Maggie doesn't wash her, you know, there, you know, when you knit with wool or wear a lot of, you know, wool, which is a hundred percent natural, it is repelling of odors and dirt. Yeah. Um, I, sometimes I do just hang my stuff up, stuff outside just to get the fresh air at it. Right. Um, and that's all it takes, you know, um, um, I usually will wash stuff a couple of times a year, maybe, or even just once a year where you wash everything in the bath and then, um, put it outside to dry. I saw Kristen Drysdale's um, Instagram recently. She had a snow-covered sweater out yeah. in the snow and letting it have its winter winter snow bath cleaning thing. It's really amazing stuff. And that's just right. one of the rabbit holes that you can fall down. It's all yeah. the properties of wool. But yeah, knitting with wool is an amazing thing. Yeah. yeah. I think I'll throw in the only addendum is like sort of with normal wear. If I have a cold or I'm very sneezy. For sure. Um, then for sure you might want to give it an yeah. extra wash. Yeah, but, but just normal. Yes. yes. It doesn't need to be washed like man-made fibers do or mixed Correct. fibers do. They need to be washed because you can smell, you know, your, your, you know, after a while. So yeah. not, not with wool, not with wool, which is really great. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Even my socks, I tend to wear them a over few and times over and over. And and I'll I'll air them out, but I don't but they, necessarily but they don't, wash but them. But they don't smell either. I mean, it's right. not like wearing stinky cotton right. socks or something. No, I noticed like my husband was always putting like he'd wear them once and he'd put them in, and I'd be like, "Stop doing that. Take that out." Um, yeah. I'm like, "You don't need to do that." I'm like, "Smell them." And then of course he's looking at you like, "Are you crazy?" <laughs> I'm like, "No, smell your socks. Like they're fine. Yeah. Like, they air them out, and yeah. then yeah. really just so that in case you have sweaty feet, they dry. Yeah. Um, and then but they're it's great. good to wear again. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah, I love so. that. So actually, knitting with wool, wearing wool is a lot easier and less work mm -hmm. than your man-made fibers. Yes. For sure. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And um, you're not wearing anything. I did not knit, knit this in case anybody's <laughs> under that illusion. As I'm about to ask you. I know, but... Um, it is lovely, though. Look at this. Yeah, it's like ribbon, but it's actually knitted. It's machine knitted. So this was a thrift store find. Nice. I, have it. Mm -hmm. I was uh, a few few months ago now with my uh, very good friend Amber and we went thrifting which we like to do and uh, I saw this for like maybe $12, $15 I don't remember <laughs> that's coming home yeah. it's a little big for me but I wear it like a jacket most, uh, most day, yeah. mostly so yeah I love this I love this I always called those rescue knits it's exactly that a rescue yeah. knit yes and it's got the, the uh, clasps yeah. on it I mean that alone is worth more than what I paid for this. Right. And it's such a shame to think of this being unloved out there. Um, even mm -hmm. though it's machine made, it, I think it, the the label says Skyr, S-K-Y-R. Okay. I think it might be Icelandic. But anyway, it's just such a shame. And whenever you see yeah. hand knits or hand crocheted stuff too, I am always tempted to just bring mm -hmm. it home. Yeah. Put it in the bath, give it a wee bit of love and then. Yeah, I those I would definitely wash. Them. Yes, <laughs> yes. But then you don't need to keep washing them after. Right, right. Yeah. Anyway, so yes, we're the Woolly Thistle and we are here to show you what we've got. But first of all, um, who do we have on the show this week? Um, this week we have Kelsey with us. Um, I We're recording a little early, so I'm not sure what Kelsey's going to be talking about, but yes. you're going to love it. <laughs> yes. Yes, um, yes, yes, Kelsey is our knitting expert. Um, she also helps via email and once a month she comes to us with a new segment. So It's always very interesting whatever mm -hmm. Kelsey has to talk about. Yeah, so yeah. stay tuned for that. Um, and then Emma Barnaby of Tiny Dust Knitting yep. is with us today. Yep. And we also have a new knitting yoga segment from, with from Kim. Kim of Turning Ground Yoga. Wow, so we got loads and loads for you today. And yeah. um, also, I just wanted to mention Rachel, her last video. I hadn't watched it when we recorded. I watched it after, and I was just like, oh my God, she's been through yeah. so much she's again. Really she's had a rough go. How, yes, a rough start to the year, and I'm sure she appreciates hearing from all of you um, that watched. Uh, yeah, so Rachel, we're thinking of you. Um, okay, so do we have a winner for... We do. Let's see. We do have a winner. So every episode we pick two winners um, to receive two twenty or a twenty-five dollar gift card to the Woolly Thistle. And the first winner is at Yesy Design. Yesy Yes Designs. Designs. And Yesy's Design says, so happy to see Rachel again and hope things get better soon. Love her updates and such an inspiration. What a hardworking lady filled with love for her dear sheep. Yes. Absolutely. That's Absolutely Rachel. Absolutely true. Um, so at Yesy Designs, you've won a $25 gift card to the Woolly Thistle. Yay. If you can send us an email at info at the Woolly Thistle, um, put prize winner in all caps and we will get you your $25 gift card. Yes. And if you'd like to be in the running to win a gift card next time, you can do that by giving us a thumbs up and leaving a comment below. And what was the other thing? Give us a subscribing. subscribing to the YouTube channel. <laughs> Please. I'm definitely out of practice doing this. I don't know. That's Your vacation has okay. is, uh, is got me all out to sea. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, just do that, and then you'll be in the running uh, for next time, and we pick the winners at random. Yeah. yeah. So we have another winner to announce later. Mm -hmm. We should go and visit one of our um, contributors now. Yeah, let's go off to Kelsey. See you on the other side. Hi, it's Kelsey again coming in to talk to you about some knitting things, some book things, some coming to the shop things, some finished things, um, just sort of knitting really all, all around. Uh, first, what I'm wearing, I think I should mention, um, the under layer is uh, not a woolly thistle yarn, it's a cotton linen blend, um, but it is the staple linen top by Hohi Locatelli. Um, it's sleeveless right there. Um, and it's a really great, it's got like a sort of twisted rib detail in the front and the same in the back. Um, and it's a great sort of shell tank top shape. Um, I just threw it on and then realized that it was not warm, warm, warm and actually wore 
this um, other sweater as kind of a coat when I just went outside um, with my family for a few minutes. This is the Very V-neck Raglan by Jessie Mae Designs um, in Retrosaria Mungo. So that is a woolly thistle yarn. It's a wool cotton blend. You can see sort of the cotton and wool take dye a little bit differently. So the whitish is the cotton. Um, it is post-consumer waste, um, wool and cotton. So no, sorry, pre-consumer. So it's in the mill stage, not after someone's used it. Um, pre-consumer fiber waste. Um, so it's got all these little sort of bits and pieces and it's it's a little nubbly in texture and um, it's a nice sort of sweatshirty kind of kind of feel. Um, I should say that the color lots do matter a lot because the um, type of fiber waste that they're putting into each batch of skeins varies. Um, so like for example, if you can see the dark, the darker green versus the lighter green right there and I put some stripes in between <laughs> in mine. I think it works, but just FYI with Mungo, I think I've mentioned that before. Some finished things that I have. First is, this is called the Artis hat, A-R-T-I-S. It's a very complicated, kind of cable-y, bobbly, sort of yarn overs in this weird chain situation. It's a not a woolly thistle yarn, but you could absolutely knit it in something like Strickagarn probably, um, or even Realm of Fievel. It is going to be in an upcoming issue of Making magazine. And I did a test knit for them, so I just wanted to show you that. It is quite a big hat. Here, I'll show you. So it's kind of a tall hat, but I think the details are really cool. I did, I did knit the biggest size, so there are two smaller sizes than this one. Um, but it's got kind of this tall texture. Anyway, I just wanted to share that quickly. Um, again, that'll be in the... Oh, sorry. Making Stories. Not Making. Making, making Stories magazine. It comes from Germany. Um called Artis, A-R-T-I-S. The other thing is I have finished, doo -doo -doo, I have finished my vest. Didn't weave in that end, but this is the Embassy Row vest. It's from the Knits from the LYS book um, from Lina Publishing. And I used um, a few different yarns that I had in my stash and then actually ran out of the color shifting yarn that I was using and made my own color shift that I wanted to show you on the back here. Um, so as you can see, like that's the real color shifting yarn up to about here. And then I used actually Garthenor Snowdonia and Biche Bouche Le Petit Lamb's Wool um, marled together and then switched over and added in some Old Centrum in this yellowy color with the orange and then went back to this icy blue and realm of Finnegar and plus the Snowdonia and the black and white kind of marl. And then what did I do? Biche Bouche with the realm of Finnegar and the orange and the icy blue up to the top. So I tried to sort of make my own little, little gradient there and I think it worked pretty well. Um, so it's a pretty classic vest shape with uh, ribbing arms. It's actually interesting. It's knit from, from right here up so it's a bottom up construction and then you add all the trim so like this ribbing that ribbing and then the bottom ribbing um, and I think I mentioned at a previous shop cast I actually added length to this section here I added about two inches there and I added about an inch in sort of this section um, because I'm quite tall and long torsoed and then at the end last thing whoops was, I'm sorry about the light in here. I was trying to get some nice natural light, but it's kind of bright. Um, I added quite a bit of ribbing at the bottom. That's a three by three ribbing, so I didn't, it didn't pull in too much. Um, but I think it looks good. I think it looks fine. And I'm intending it, I'm intending to wear it over like a button up shirt. So the button up shirt will sort of stick out the bottom. And that will be that. Embassy Row Vest from Knits from the LYS. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was um, two books that I recently acquired. Well, I had one for a little bit, but I recently acquired the second. This one is Fair Isle Knitting by Karina Olsen. So Karina Olsen is not from Shetland. She's from Sweden. Um, so she brings kind of a pan North Sea kind of approach to it. So she does some comparison between what she's used to in Scandinavia and then some of the traditions in 
um, in Shetland. Uh, it has several patterns. It has, I think, what does it say? 22 patterns, and it's different things like gloves, which you don't see a ton of patterns for, gloves, but then also cowls, hats, um, is that another? Nope, sweater, kids sweater, adult sweater. Um, I should mention that the garment patterns are not size inclusive. They go up to about a 48 inch chest, 48 and a quarter, three quarters or something like that. Um, I haven't double checked all of them, but at least a few of them don't go up that far. I will say if you're somewhere close to that, you could correct it a little bit with a looser gauge. Um, so just having a slightly looser gauge on your, on your sweater will make it a bit bigger. But if you're, you know, in the sort of 55, 60 inch chest range, this may not be a good book for you, except for the, the accessories. So it's a little bit of a bummer. I mean, it's a big bummer that it's not size inclusive, but what I actually like about this book is not necessarily the patterns themselves, but everything else in it. So there, she puts in a good amount of history, but then also like this, sort of explorations of color and how you put the colors together. So like these are three different examples that are the same colors in the same, are they the same pattern? Yeah, in the same pattern, just arranged in a different order. Um, so like here the darkest is the background and then they change the order in the different ones. So she spends a lot of time talking about color and color inspiration and um, swatching for color and do, doing a speed swatch with a piece of cardboard and um, looking at sort of inspiration of like here's these eggs and here's some colors in both Jameson and Smith and Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift. Um, and she talks about those two companies, the differences between the companies, how she gets um, inspiration. Like here's, and here's a picture in one of her patterns that shows the same pattern. Um, I think this is a vest. It's swatched in different colors. So you can see how different a pattern can look depending on different colors. So yes, there are issues with the garments um, but things like, oops, sorry for the chart, gloves and other things, they have, they're a little bit more size inclusive and she does put in a good amount of history stuff. So it's quite a good book for, um, a sort of smaller introduction to some of the, the history things and the color theory and the picking colors. There are much thicker books and much more in-depth books about each of those individual things. Um, but if you're looking for a good um, introduction to some of those different elements of Fair Isle Knitting, I think this is a great, a great option for that. It's um, definitely readable, it's definitely sort of a um, digestible length, like here's some a matching cowl and gloves. So I actually recommend this book except for the fact that of, of the garment size inclusivity, which is really unfortunate and I wish it wasn't the case, but um, Otherwise, the information in this book is really good. And I would say related to that, which I wanted to share, which I already had, is JNS Worset Inspo. I think it's pronounced Worset. Verset? Verset? I don't know. Um, it is a book directly from Jameson and Smith that they go through and do exactly what Karina did a bit in this book, but gives you pages and pages and pages of a picture from Shetland somewhere, like this boat, and all these colors that they pulled out from this photograph. And then, helpfully, all the color numbers. So if you go through and you're like, hmm, like this one, this one's great. I say, I love this picture of nighttime at, what does it say, Barron's Beach? Bain's Beach, Bain's Beach and Larrick. Those are cool colors to put together. Here's all the color numbers. And then you can look at a pattern or you can look like a book at a book like Fair Isle Knitting and decide how to arrange them and end up with a, a garment or a, an accessory that, um, or even there's little project bags, little sort of zippered pouches that are, that are Fair Isle Knit in the Fair Isle Knitting book that pull inspiration from, from these cool photographs. And I think that's awesome. Like, look at this one with the rock and the lichen and then the colors and then, other, and then even all the numbers. And there's nothing else in this book. You know, there's one like kind of intro to us kind of, you know, page, and then it just jumps right in. That's the next page, a photo and the colors. So I think this is fantastic for people 
for two kinds of people, honestly. People who are very into color and are pretty comfortable choosing color, but find themselves in a rut. You know, you, you always pick purple or you always pick blue and white or you always pick neutrals or something like that. You might go, ooh, look at that. Like it's got my blue, it's got sort of layer colors, but it's got this range in between that looks really cool together. And you can gain some color confidence in that. Um, and then the other group of people is people who have no color confidence, who are like, I have no idea what I want to put together. I have no idea what I want something to look like. But then you pull this up and you say, oh, I love this picture. Look at this color combination that I can put together and start from there. So two books that I would actually like recommend kind of together, Fair Isle Knitting, Fair Isle Knitting and Worse at Info. All right. Happy knitting. Bye. All right, well, welcome back. Um, thank you, Kelsey, for your segment there. I haven't watched it yet, but I know I'm gonna be enthralled when I do, and I know that our audience will have just enjoyed yeah. it. Um, so, Maggie, what are you knitting on? Do you have anything going on right now? Um, I've been, <laughs> I have been working on my February socks. So uh -huh. I'm attempting um, a pair of socks a month. Um, and this month's socks, I'm Ooh. holding WYS. You know, I looked it up, we couldn't think of the name last time, and it does look like fairy lights, but yeah. it's not sparkly. Right. So I don't know if the, but Fairy Lights is sparkly now. So the, so I, I wonder if the very first, because this is deep stash. For me, right. I Maybe it was pre-sparkles. Yes. Yeah, so I think oh. I have a pre-sparkly skein, but the so colorway looks exactly like that. Yeah. Um, and a bottle of milk bottle. I'm so excited that I'm near the end of the ball for this. Um, so I finished <gasps> one sock on my trail. I love, look how squishy. I'm so ready. I'm holding them double and it does, it gives you a DK weight and then I'm just using a DK weight sock pattern. Oh my gosh. Um, I didn't close the toe because I need to make sure it's going to fit the person <laughs> that it's intended for. And I didn't have my sock ruler while me? I was traveling. No. Nope. No. <laughs> this um, is gorgeous. I'd love a sweater in this. I really like this. It's, it's held up really nice. And it's fun to see the how the marling affects the variegated. Like, it still stripes. I can still tell it's fairy lights if you look at this compared to how yeah. fairy lights knits up. Yeah. Um, but it it's is just beautiful. really nice. And, yeah, I mean, it goes so fast too. Yeah. So, um, which is how I'm like midway through February and um, how more many, than midway. How many stitches did you do for a DK? So I did, it's 56. Nice. So but zoom, zoom. Yeah. And that's to fit, this is to fit uh, a gentleman. So, yeah. um, yeah. So I think I'm almost to the heel. Highly, I didn't highly do the legs super long because I don't think he wanted a yeah. really long leg. I love that. I love that. I wonder if um, people out there who've got some of the sock yarn, they could marl it like this yeah. too. Are you knitting along with socks throughout the year too? This is a very loosey-goosey yeah. um, uh, member of our Ravelry group. Yeah, so uh, it's actually our Facebook group. Facebook um, group, sorry. Had started, just put out there the idea that we were going to knit a pair of socks a month. Yeah. And I decided to jump in on that. And I did too. So, I actually can show you. Do you have wait. anything else to show? No, so that's really it. So I took this on my travels and um, managed to get quite a bit done. I'm actually wearing my West Yorkshire Spinners January socks nice. today. They are not, but you know, I have plenty of yarn left. I probably could, you know. Yeah, so I think I'm going to have extra of that fairy light. So I'm going to, um, I think, make some shorty socks for me. Yes, very nice. And um, I've probably shown you these. I'm not sure. And unfortunately, I don't remember the name of the pattern. But this is uh, John Arben's Exmoor Sock Yarn. And it is really, really soft to the touch. And um, I thought this was, and I still is think it, it is. Oh, the color is mizzle. The color I think so. Actually, I think yeah, I think you're right. Gray, yeah. It's just a natural gray. But I think the pattern, I, I'm sure it's by this handmade life, but in true... We can put the pattern name here. Well, in true form for me, I uh, <laughs> started knitting the second sock. And you'll notice that the first sock, it's got one of those... Um, a short you, row heel? Yeah, I think it's a German short... I, well, it's some sort of short row heel. And I get knitting on this one, and I knit the heel, and it's a heel turn, heel flap and turn in the pattern. Oh. And I'm like... What did oh, I, so it's not that pattern? Or did you reverse it? Do you prefer toe-up? No. It's definitely a toe-up pattern because that's why I'm knitting it toe-up. Oh. And I do prefer heel down or whatever, cuff down. And I'm like, oh. uh, how did I do that? Like, how am I <laughs> doing that? And then I think what I came to realize was that I was, in fact, knitting the second sock from a different pattern. And I've done this before with something. Oops. And that... The whole the whole um, lace pattern was slightly different oh. than than what I'd knit because I knew this a while notice. ago. That's what I thought. Just keep going. And then I'm like happily turning my heel, going, huh? 
Like, I'm sure this was a, yeah, sure enough. So I ripped today. This is the problem of a languishing whip. It is. I always I always think of the yarn harlot who wrote that, you know, never put your knitting down, even just to run to the bathroom without leaving a note. Because when you come back to it two years later, you'll, know where, you'll not know where you are. That's exactly what I do. I yeah. just don't know. So anyway, I found a short row heel, you know, tutorial. Just followed that. And I'm just sticking with my little pattern. And um, so yeah, Olivia, maybe you can answer if you if you're at all ever watching. Probably not, but I would love to know what the hell I'm knitting. I think it is one of your patterns. That is hilarious. I've got quite a few of our pattern patterns, and none of them jumped out as being this, except for the one with the turn heel. Huh? I'm I don't kind know. of. I'm, yeah. It's a mystery. It is a mystery unto. I am a mystery unto myself. Honestly, <laughs> I am amazed at how I do that. And then I can't remember if I showed you this hat. I haven't got a name for it yet. But this was recently finished. It's in Jameson and Smith two ply, and it's the same as this one. It's the second knitting yeah. of a pattern that I have um, worked up, and I love it. I love it. the The feel of the hat it sits really nice. It's just coming down to the right yeah. part over my ears, and it, my glasses are. It looks really cute. Thank you. Yeah, it's really. I'm really. It's comfy. And uh, we could use this right now. It's Arctic out it there. It is very, very chilly yeah. outside. So anyway, no names yet. Um, Got to think on that. Some of you left some great suggestions on our last video. So. Oh, for, for names? Yeah, for names. Oh, if you have any that. new suggestions. Yes. In here, but. Yes, we, we will put <laughs> kids together for these eventually. But, you know, it's taken us on sweet time to, yeah. for me to get things written up. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Um, and by the time you're watching this, we will be knitting on our Colorwork Accessories cow, Huzzah. which starts, started last Friday. Do you know what you will be knitting? So I think I'm going to pull out, I have a Latvian mitten kit, mm -hmm. um, and I think I'm going to, they've just been sitting just because I've been distracted by other things, so I think I'm going to pull those out. I'm going to check my gauge to make sure I'm getting gauge because I would like to wear them, and um, if I'm not, I'll rip out and start over, and right. if I have gotten gauge, I'll just keep going. Wonderful. So that's I... the plan. I, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I think before I leave work today, I'm going to have a look through the shop and see what takes my fancy. And that's nice. what I'll be knitting on. Yeah. Either that or another hat. Because I, I actually, this is very potato chippy. Uh, you just, it's very fun to knit. And yeah. I've, I'm not bored of it yet. So that's good. All right. So should we go to another contributor? Maybe? Yeah, let's go see what Emma's up to. All right. And we'll see you on the other side. Hi everyone, my name is Emma and I'm coming to you from Baltimore, Maryland. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about color work accessories. As you can see, I have a, a large wall of Jameson and Smith and Jameson's of Shetland yarn behind me. Um, and a little bit about just like how to use your leftover yarn from projects like that you might use those for and stuff. Um, so couple things. The first thing is I actually did make something for the colorwork accessory cal. Um, I made a headband. It's not blocked yet, which is why it's curling up. Um, but it is just like a little OXO motif with a few different colors. I think there's one, well, including the gray, there's five colors. Um, yeah, I thought it was kind of graphic. I didn't know how these colors were going to play together. I just kind of picked them randomly. Um, I will discuss how and why I do that in a second. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it cast on like fewer stitches than I would for a hat. Like usually I would cast on like 168 stitches for a Fair Isle hat because that 168 is a good multiple of like a few bigger numbers that you can use for these big repeating motifs. Um, so I did 144 stitches, um, fewer. I did like it was like 132 or something for the, the edges. Um, and then I increased and decreased for the body of the headband. And like I said, it's curling up right now because I haven't blocked it, but it actually does fit. I wasn't really totally sure if it would, um, but I wear my hair in a ponytail and a bun pretty often. And so it's nice to have something that's like not um, a hat that kind of sometimes doesn't cover your ears all the way if it has to go over your ponytail or something. And this is, I, when I finished this, I was like, oh, it's kind of wide, but actually that's really nice because it really covers your ears and it'll keep out the wind. Um, and it's not too tight, so it's not uncomfortable. And I mean, if you're really sensitive to scratchy wools, well, my number one tip is go outside where it's cold. Um, you won't feel like you're, you won't feel, it won't feel itchy or just, um, you know, use softer wool. <laughs> you could do that too. Um, but I really love this. Um, headband, I just, just did a quick little design using a Fair Isle chart book, um, and really enjoyed it. So I think I'm going to make a couple more of these because I have a lot of friends who also like to wear their hair up. 
I haven't decided if it's appropriate for running yet because as a big runner, um, I run outside in the winter and sometimes I wonder like when it's really cold, sometimes I'll wear wool, like a wool hat, um, like knitted, knitted wool hat or mittens, but not often, but maybe I might try out something like this because wool is actually really moisture wicking. So if you ever wear knitwear when you exercise outside, let me know, like put it in the comments. I'm interested to know that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna block this and then make some more. Um, and so I wanna talk about the way I pick the colors for this because I don't like to, I mean, sometimes I'll, if I really want something specific, I'll go to the, I'll go to the, the full stash of these full skeins. Um, but generally I really like to find ways to use my leftovers. And you can see that there's an empty square in that cube right there. And that's because this is what usually goes in it. This is my bin of Shetland and Shetland-like bits and bobs see in there so some of them are like like this is Roma for instance and like some of them are bigger skeins and some of them are really small balls um so actually what I like to do sometimes I take out the big things um so that it's just like little things in here and I'll literally like close my eyes and I'll just pick so this is how maybe I'm, I'm doing this live so I mean sometimes I have to make edits and like put things back but let's let's see what we get okay so this green with this is the Jameson and Smith color not sure which number it is, but it's like green and has this kind of funky red heathering. I actually like this as a Fair Isle pop a lot. It um, makes things really jump out, especially if you're using like pinks. Um, I use this, I had made a coffee cozy, like a cop, coffee cup cozy recently that was mostly pinks and then I did a pop of green in the middle and I used this green because the red in it made the, it really popped out from the pink. Oh, okay, so we're, we're going in a green direction here. I've got these two. So we're looking at some brights right now. I like that. Uh, this is, that's a neutral maybe for the background but maybe not I think we're gonna put that one back oh gray also neutral I mean we could use gray I'm just gonna put the neutrals here um that's the problem is sometimes you just get random I mean that could actually be a background this is Jameson Smith Supreme Jumper Weight in 2005 I have a full skein of this I used to have this on a cone um yeah, we'll see maybe these would be good as a background for that. Okay, a lot of these are just neutrals, so I'm just gonna pick neutrals out and just put them away. Oh, that's green. I actually like that. That's fun. Okay, this is also a Jameson and Smith color. So it's like a little bit more of a mossy green. Okay, I like where we're going here. Oh, blue. We could have a blue. Ah, I kind of like this little quartet here. Maybe we'll have a fifth. Let's see. A little purple. Actually, I don't hate that. Like a little cool color moment. We'll see though, I don't know. Let me, let me put the purple aside for a second. Purple is a maybe. Oh, it's a neutral as well. Hmm, white. Well, you know, that could be a good, actually that would be a beautiful background. It's kind of a creamy white. Let's use that for the background. That's Biche Bouche, I think. Le Petit Lamb's Wool. No, 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 no. See, there's so many neutrals in here. <laughs> This pink might, well, no, that's probably too light. Unless you use that as the middle, mm, maybe. Doesn't, you have to th have things that contrast enough. Okay, I like this blue. Okay, I think I have, they don't usually come out all the same color family. And like, obviously I've rejected a few, but I kind of like this little, this little grouping. I think this is fun. I think like dark blue, then this blue, and then this green, and then this green, and then the turquoise in the middle. I like that. I think that's fun. I think I'm going to do that for a headband um, with this white. It's going to be a lot of color changes, but that's okay. I like that. Um, yeah, we'll do the Peary's in this, and then we'll do the, like, kind of, yeah, we'll do one, one, two, three, four, five. It'll be fun. There's just going to be, like, one row of this bright turquoise. I love this bright turquoise. It's also, I think all of these are Jameson and Smith. I'm not positive. Oh, no, this one's Jameson's of Shetland. It's like Atlantic or Pacific. I can't remember which one has the heathering. Pacific, I think. Anyway, yeah, so I think that's fun. That's kind of how I, honestly, I like to just, yeah, I go in here, it's like dumpster diving, except it's not a dumpster because it's the it's the greatest dumpster in the world. It's full of little balls of Shetland wool. <laughs> okay, Something, sometimes I say things without thinking about what they sound like before they, you know, come out of my mouth. You ever feel that way? <laughs> All right, um, so this is one of my favorite ways to use scrap yarn. Another thing though that I wanna talk about in terms of scrap yarn is this sweater that I'm working on. It's this is for a friend who I'm gonna go visit in the UK in a, about a month. 
And this is just this marled sweater that here's the, it's just a raglan sweater. Um, this is the front. I haven't separated the sleeves yet, but I'm getting close. And you can see that it's, it's, it's white. I mean, the background is white. Like, well, one of the colors I'm holding together is white and the other one changes. And it doesn't change at the same rate. It's kind of random. And so the way I'm making this uh, is I am holding this white, just as a plain 7525 sock yarn that I get from like a dyer, this is a, you know, wholesale dyer um, companies because they dye yarn. And then this is called a magic ball. And a magic ball, I have another one right here, you can see. Um, these are just like basically balls of yarn. They're almost all fingering weight or sport weight. Um, and it's like leftovers from small projects, like really small leftovers, like five grams or less, I think I usually do. So you ball it up and then you like tie a magic knot. If you've never heard of a magic knot, um, there are some great YouTube tutorials. It's just a way of you make two little knots, you tie one end of one yarn around one, the other yarn and then you tie that end of that yarn around the other yarn and then you pull the yarns apart and then not slide together. And it's actually very secure. Um, it's a very secure way to join yarn. It does leave a little nub, but it makes you not have to weave in any ends. Um, and if you're really um, like afraid that it will come out or if you've had that experience before, maybe you're using a superwash yarn, like these are all, almost all superwash yarns because it's usually sock leftovers. Um, you can get like a little bit of fabric glue or like um, something that, that secures fabric and it'll make it like a little bit like hard and maybe uncomfortable if it's on the inside, but you can try it. Um, but I thought that this would be a really fun way to use my magic ball was to make a marled sweater for a friend who I made some marled socks for her once and she loved them. And I was like, oh, I'll make you a marled sweater. Um, I just think that's fun. And I really like the effect, actually. I think it looks cool. Everyone who's seen it so far has been like, oh my gosh, that's cool. Like, and I'm like, I know I didn't, I thought it might be kind of chaotic and I think it will be kind of chaotic when it's done, but I really like it. And I think it's a really fun way to really use like, like I always have tiny little amounts of leftovers and I'm like, well, what on earth am I going to do with this? Should I use it as pillow stuffing? I don't know. So I just thought, yeah, let's, let's use it all in these magic balls and let's make something fun with it, make something whimsical. So I encourage you to also find some fun and whimsical ways to use your leftovers. And actually, I'd also love to know that in the comments. Like when you have really small pieces and bits and bobs left over, what do you do with them? Um, because I think we should talk about this more. Like I literally have so many random bins of leftover scrap yarns, whatever. I need to know what to do with them. Uh, do you make blankets? Do you make pot holders? Do you make little like little things? Do you make scrappy projects like little mitered square blankets? Sometimes I do that too. I have one always like kind of on the go. So I finish socks. I use the like leftovers to make a square and the mitered square blanket, like things like that. And I have this like, I also have like a jar of these little skeins of like random hand spun bits and bobs that get left on the bobbin. And um, I don't know what to do with these either. So, you know, I need, I need some inspiration. We all do. Um, so yeah, drop that in the comments and I will share, hopefully we share another one of these headbands with these fun colors. Ah, one more time. Uh, these fun colors next time I see you, or you can follow me on Instagram at Barnaby Knits and I'll post it there. Um, ah, sorry. There they are. So thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you, Emma. It's always fun to hear from you. You have so much energy. I wish I had half <laughs> of it. So thank you. And uh, yeah, what are we moving into now, Maggie? Um, so I think we were going to talk about some things that are new in the shop or still available in the shop. Yes. Um, so by, net, by the time you're watching, 52 weeks of accessories, um, which is currently in transit. Mm. Um, stuck on a truck but by the time you're watching this it'll be here yeah um but it might be a it, it, it sounds like it's going to be late for its actual lunch day yes i think it's something to do with that storm in uh in boston that yes. happened it sort of held things up yeah yeah but, uh, out beyond our control yeah but, um, by the time that you're watching this though it will be live in the show yeah well Live in the shop, ready for you to order. This one does look like a really good one. It's I really lovely. like the the mittens on the front, yep. which were done by Skein Deer. Yeah. Um, yeah, she got the cover. Of, that's so fun. Yeah, lots of really good accessories in there. There's a couple yeah. of, there's a cowl that's knit in tuku fingering. Yeah. Um, that one looks really, really pretty. And those of you who are fans of Strands of Joy by Lina, there's Strands of Joy 2 coming. And that actually is on pre-order already. Yeah, so if you are a big fan of um, Anna Johanna, um, this one has a lot of really good designs in it. Mm. Um, I was just looking at them before we started recording. And yeah. 
lots of fun mitts in this one. Nice. So um, you can head to the shop now and pre-order your copy. Yes, yes. And uh, we should mention what our Bensers are wearing today. What do yes. we have here? Um, so this is the Rusty Cardigan. Yep. Um, which is knit in Plodo Lopi. Yep. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. Yep. Um, it is a great first steek. So if you've never steeked but are steek curious, mm -hmm. um, this is a great first pattern. What I like about this pattern too is it's, um, and actually I've got a wee tip for you, but it's straight up and down. So the hip measurement is same as the bust measurement, but it's an Icelandic pattern that has been translated into English and it talks about the hip measurement. Nothing about the bust. Interesting. And I remember... Uh, feeling like you know what about the bust well it's the hip it's just straight up and down so okay. if you end up doing that don't get confused like I did that's what it is um, and it's lovely uh, knitting with Plotilope it's a great first uh, project to knit in Plotilope yeah and it's so warm and light once you wear it it's yeah. funny we do get the odd uh, customer who buys uh, some Plotilope starts knitting with it and then emails and says it's breaking and it's like yeah it's okay all you need to do is lay it over each other and keep knitting I mean you yeah. don't you don't really need to and do really that. if you unwind from the plate and then you knit a little and then unwind some more don't tug don't tug um, yeah if you do accidentally forget to knit, tug, it'll go back together yeah. but um, yeah and once it's all knitted together it's very strong yeah I mean it's, it is a really it makes for a really strong fabric there's nothing and it's very lightweight very wearable warm traps all that warmth and then this is i was wearing this last time mm -hmm. this is the dun robin in um studio donegal in their blackberry color but it's our thistle color it's very close to at least yeah. and uh, i really enjoyed wearing that the other day i'm going to take my charcoal one home and bring that to new york i think great yeah, yeah. it'll be a nice cozy knit for this time uh, of year i know when it is quite blustery Freezing. outside yes um, so yeah um okay yeah so Let's show things that are in the shop, shall we? Yes. We had a launch of our carry-all bags, which went really, really well. Thank you so much if you showed up for that and ordered. Uh, we sold quite a lot. In fact, we are sold out of the blue and the teal. And we have these beautiful ones remaining, which are just lovely. This is our thistle uh, sort of flagship color. I brought in my tote bag nice. to show you. And uh, I love this tote bag. We're out of stock of these, except for the gray color, which is beautiful. Yeah, I was looking to see if we had, because we also have the we project have the bag, which is... But look at this. That yes, goes really it nice. It does. It goes really well. Oof. So these, these carry-alls, all of these bags are made especially custom-made for us. They are limited quantity and only available here while they're here. Yes. And we they, do them in small batches. Yes, and it takes months and months for that to all happen. And I think you guys get it because you did. You showed up, and thank you so much. Uh, it was a really fun day to see them go live. Yeah. So yeah. each one is made with authentic Harris tweed, so it has the label. Yeah, that label is a government-issued type of thing. Um, it is only only uh, tweed made in Harris Uh can can get the Harris Tweed Authority uh, badge, as it were. So we have those, and we have these also with the Harris Tweed label. Yeah, our own little label on there too. I think too, like if you don't, if you aren't familiar with the Harris Tweed, it's not factory made. It no. is handmade in it's made, homes. It's, they they have they have weavers. loom sheds, and they'll have a wee shed at the bottom of their garden with their loom in it, and that is where it's made. So, and you know, it's funny because Katrina, who we work with, she is the designer um, behind Studio Tolsta who makes these bags. She literally will go and buy the bolts of this and then take them on the plane with her to India where her husband says, hello, darling. And uh, they get making these bags using the tweed that she brought over from Harris. So there is a lot involved uh, from the people sitting weaving these in their yeah. garden sheds to um, where they're made finally and then brought to us here. Yeah. And they're lovely. I love them. Mm -hmm. They're they're beautiful. Yeah. So this, what I'm holding here is our little, we call it our project bag, project bag but it's mm -hmm. a zipper, zippered sock bag, really. It fits Small. quite a bit, too. It would, it would ca yeah, carry a couple of uh, sock projects easily. Um, they have, uh, and so does these, uh, do these... Uh, the brushed cotton inside, which is so soft. We have that done specially. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not just, you know, boring old cotton. It's brushed and it's very lovely, lovely yep. hand. And the carryall has four big pockets inside along with a zipper pocket and yep. a label. I don't know if I can show you. 
Oh, the, our label that has the Wooly Thistle and Studio Tulsa. Yeah, did you show them the out, outer pockets I didn't. too? So that and these are magnetic closures, which is really nice. Uh, this one has the brown handles and the tan canvas. Yeah. And yours has black and black. And then we've got the pouch in here. Yes, I stuck that in there because I thought, whoops, wow, that's really, it's yeah, cute. It's cute. And um, I think we're sold out of these now, maybe, okay. I think. Um, but yeah, so it fits the pouch in there perfectly. Mm -hmm. And of course, all of this could all go in here too. Um, but yes, we love, we love our bags, don't we? Mm -hmm. Feel very, very awesome to have these here. Yes. Yes. Um, so yes, uh, come shop and uh, check out the purple. The purple is our flagship sort of woolly thistle color and uh, it's a really nice vibrant standout color, but it's also, you know, it's not, it's not too, I don't know, it's not too vibrant. Um, I think it would go with anything that you're wearing or, or that sort of thing. Because the carry-all you're going to use for yeah. throwing your keys and your bag and your knitting and you're good to go with that carry-all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a great pop of color. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, a couple other things that we have in the shop um, that I grabbed behind us, a couple of new books. Um, we have um, JNS has released their Worse It Inspo 2 book, and we have some copies here in the shop. Do we have any of the one left? We Worse do. But we have a couple of copies of the one at time of recording, so I'm not sure if by the time this goes live we'll have them. If not, you can sign up for the back in stock notification because we will get more yeah. with our next yeah. resupply. And this book is um, such a great idea. Yeah, they, you take inspiration photos and they pair it with JNS colors, and they tell you which colors. It's just a really nice way to sort of, if you're not sure, you can use this at all. Oh. I know. Uh, so just gorgeous. Yep. Yeah. I think choosing colors is one of the hardest things to do as well. So any help you can get is good. We are always Excuse ready and willing to help you here at the Wooly Thistle too. Oh, so cute. Look at the little pony. Um, <laughs> just so fun. Um, so these are available in the shop now. Yes. Very lovely. As um, well as uh, we got a Jameson and Smith uh restock so uh we were out of quite a few kits for a little bit but yeah. now they're all back in or at least most of them are fully restocked again yeah um and then um in in the spirit of all things color work if you're new to color work and are interested in getting yeah. started we do have some copies of the nordic knitting primer yeah um by in the shop now. Dry, drysdale yeah yeah and this is just a great um she takes you right from um a casting on uh just in plain stockinette to your first color work project um all the way through to more complicated yeah, sweaters um, knits um and she has these knitting sweaters pretty much out the gate so mm -hmm. um, if you want to if she also has to. mittens and hats and things yeah so it's got sweaters and accessories um and this is available in the shop now yeah fantastic yeah i'm excited for the color work cal even though i'm undeclared as to what i'm knitting yet <laughs> as of time of recording but it's a fun one it's a fun one it'd be fun to see you there for mm -hmm. sure yeah. what else do we have going on maggie um we also still have copies of i'll let you show that one since you're so book. smooth with it um yeah sorry norland has a gorgeous book called softly mm -hmm. timeless knits and uh it's set in paris which is one of my favorite places to go not that I get there all the time, not, not trying to say that, but many, many patterns in here, um, including garments and accessories. And they all look like very wearable pieces. They are, yeah, you know, she, um, I mean, I love, you, this is the one that got me going on the sequins mm -hmm. um, and I can never find the picture, but anyway, uh, yeah, very wearable pieces. I think size inclusive as well. And, oh, there we oh, go. I really like that one. <laughs> That, there we go. I that to sequin that. skirt. That sequin squirt. Squirt. <laughs> that sequin skirt with your all over color work sweater. You know, I thought of you because I was at Target. Target. Did you see it? And they had they had a it was a twill skirt, so it wasn't twill? exactly your twill. Tw oh, twelve. It was, yes, it was. So it just looked so fun, and it was like hot pink. And I was like, well, it's not sequins. I didn't get it, but... Um, <laughs> but but really, you, you would wear that me, on our trip to Paris? Yes, it yes. made me feel like that would be a really fun yes. thing to wear. Actually, Target did have some sequin dresses that I might have tried on and then yeah. got myself... I did do a Google that did you, you could easily find sequin skirts. They oh. are a thing. They are a thing. Look at this lovely satiny. 
-hmm. yeah i just love the way she's put this book together and she has she has her own podcast as well that you can check out it's a nice way to sort of dress up your knits like yeah. we often we often yeah. throw them on with jeans or regular right. pants but that yeah. we can elevate it's elevating them. yes so we have a few of these mm -hmm. in stock right now. That's good. Yeah. Great. Great, great, great. That's all. Yes. And um, do you have plans for your next sock knit? What you're going to be doing? Um, My March socks. I haven't quite picked out my March socks yet. I'm really cruising through February. Um, And I think last time I showed you some leftover hand spun that I found. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'll, I may try and squeak out a second mm -hmm. February pair for myself. But um, no, I have a bin with all my sock yarns and I'll have to go in and go diving for yeah. like, March. I think I'm going to do one of our Ramblers in, um, if you go out by Virginia. Nice. And those were the, so beautiful. By the time this released, um, Virginia has released her, if you yes. go out, mitts. Yes. I really need to knit those. They're so, so pretty. Yeah. Um, and you could probably great. knit that and the socks out of one mm -hmm. skin, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's going to be my March socks anyway, by the yeah. time I get there. Yeah, I, right. I might pick something. I, I'm gonna need some color for March, mm. for sure. Mm -hmm. So I'll I'll pick something mm -hmm. um, bright. colorful out of my yeah. my bin. Yeah. So. What about some of that bright pink, uh, Barbie pink? Oh, the electric tuku? pink and tuku sock. I don't have that in my bin. I do want to knit with but tuku. But I could probably make that happen. <laughs> yes, I see it right here. So I think this is the fingering, but the sock is the exact same color. It's this matte, this hot pink that is just, uh, I really love it. I want to knit Tuku socks. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe that's helpful. I think the hot pink would make a really good, um, and I think it's in Strands of Joy, too, that she has a cardigan that uses, like, the uh, the natural with uh -huh. a pop of hot pink in the yeah, color. Yeah. I just, think, like, a cowl or something, yeah. just socks. Yeah. I love this hot pink. It's so good. It's hot pink, but it's also, it does have a little bit of softness. It's not neon. Right. But it is plenty bright, which I love. Yeah. Yes. It's just such a fun color. I know. I know. All right. So what else have we got going on? Uh, Who do we need to visit? Um, we have one more winner. So I think we will pick the last winner. All right. And then we'll go do some yoga with Kim. Sounds good. All right. So our second winner today is at Baby Zale. Um, who is Gail Waterhouse. And Gail says, Congrats. I will have to try the Tuku wool sock yarn. The pink and brown and cream that Corrine held up reminded me of Neapolitan ice cream. Oh, yeah. yeah that yeah, would yeah. make really fun color work socks. I'm seeing lots of really great color work sock patterns. And you can knit color work socks for, <gasps> Ooh, Ooh, for the cow. Maybe that's what I do. There you go. Oh, I like that idea. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, Gail, you've won a $25 gift card to the Woolly Thistle. If you can email us at info at the woolly thistle and put prize winner in all caps we will give you get you your gift card we will too sweet <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you want to be in the running just leave us a comment below give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel tell your friends because that helps us grow which is wonderful so thank you um yeah and that's pretty much it okay so we're, right. gonna, we're gonna let kim take us out with a little bit of yoga thank you so much for being with us here today yes and i think all that's left to say is if you go out take your knitting bye Hello, this is Kim with Yoga for Knitters. Welcome back to another episode. Today I've been running around like crazy and then I finally got a chance to sit and knit and within 10 minutes my neck was hurting and my back was hurting and everything was achy. I don't want to quit knitting. I finally got a chance to sit down. So what I'm going to do instead and what you can do as well is follow along with this short little undo your kinks kind of practice where we're gonna get into the neck, the upper back, and the front of the chest. All the things that can get a little achy from our knitting position. So let's undo the kinks so that we can get back at it. If you uh, are interested, you can follow along with me on Instagram, uh, Ravelry, Facebook and YouTube and otherwise let's get on to our mats. Okay, we're gonna start on all fours And just run through a few cat cows, but uh, before you begin I want you to pay attention to your grip the way your hands are on the mat First of all, you want your hands right under your shoulders Secondly a gentle tiny little bend in the elbow and thirdly, you want to be pressing into the mat with the pads of your fingers so that the middle, and this is the technical term, the middle of your hand springs up. 
And that way we have, um, you know, uh, work and some tension in the arms supporting the body rather than just dumping into the wrists. It helps to save those wrists, which are so important for knitting. So we'll do a couple cat cows, just moving the spine in one direction and then the other. It feels so good. I, I tend to close my eyes in this one because uh, it's nice to really, really get into it and just feel where am I tight? What is releasing? What's going on? Awesome. And you can stay in this cat cow as long as you want. So we're gonna move back, we're gonna move on to the next thing, which is a puppy dog kind of variation. So we're gonna move the hands forward, keep the hips stacked right over the knees, and move the hands forward until you can feel a bend in that upper back. So the lower back's really not getting into it, and to prevent the low back from getting a great big curve, you're gonna pull the abdominals in. Squeeze the abdominals in towards the spine, and that will kind of firm up your corset and allow that bend to happen more in the upper back. Now, if you're kind of down here, see I've got a bit more bend in my elbows, and there's not much happening in the upper back, that's when you slide the arms away from you. And even a millimeter or two might give you the difference between an opening and just hanging out. There is a bit of pressure here in the uh, shoulder joint. So pay attention to how you're gripping the mat. You wanna be holding the mat with your finger pads. You wanna activate the muscles 20 to 30% all the way up the arms. And the core is working as well so that we're not just like hanging out of our shoulders. Everything is protected. And go easy. If you're feeling pain, back off. But if you're feeling just a little bit of discomfort, that's your body undoing. And that's what we want. That's a good thing. <sighs> and now, just to uh, juxtapose this back, back extension, we're going to slide forward until our elbows are right under our shoulders. Now we're in Sphinx pose. The hands, if it works for you, are flat on the floor. We're pressing down into the elbows. We're drawing the shoulders away from the ears. And now you can see that that bend is in the low back. I want you to pay attention to that little bone right in the middle of your throat and feel that bone moving backwards slightly. That does take the bend a little more intensively into the low back, but it also helps to work the muscles in the back of the neck and the back of the shoulders, which are the muscles that help to keep us upright after all of that forward head bending that we tend to do when we're knitting. Just watch that the shoulders don't start to shrug. We want to keep them down and away. And now take the left arm out to your side. I'll just show with my right arm like this or like this, whichever one feels good. Goal post or straight out to the side. And we're just going to use the opposite arm to roll up and back. Okay, so if you were going to hold this for a really long time, you might want a nice little pillow under your head. <clears throat> Sorry. Sometimes when you do twists, it twists your lungs as well, and then, you know, things that are in your lungs need to come out. Uh, so this is one variation. Another one, you can stay here if it feels good, but another variation is to come up to the wall. If you'd like to st stretch across the front of the shoulder, but lying on your tummy doesn't work, this is your option. You're just going to come against the wall. Well, let's see. So you're coming against the wall like so, so that you're flat on the wall, and then just rotate your body away from the wall. So the arm doesn't move, just the torso does. And we're creating the same kind of action that we did in our broken wing pose, lying on the floor. Okay, so let's switch to the other side. I'm just gonna flip around so I can still see you. Opposite arm out to the side. We're just gonna roll ourselves up and over. Ah. That feels so good. And remember, you always have the option of doing this one on the wall. If the weight of your body across your shoulder just feels not so good. 
deep breaths, slow it down. Think about where you're feeling tension in your body. Well, I've got some in the back of my hip here, so I gotta really pay attention and relax. Okay. And come back on to our tummies and then up into all fours. Cross the feet at the ankles. This is a yoga trick. And then roll all the way over. Lovely. Okay, um, you're gonna find a comfortable seat. I like to sit just cross-legged. Um, if you wanna sit on a, the edge of a chair, that works as well. And we're going to, um, I'll do my best to demo this, but I'm kind of sore today, so we'll see how far it, I can go. But I love this stretch. It's such a wonderful stretch to undo tightness in the upper back and the upper neck, in the neck, I should say. All right, so you take the both hands together behind your back, interlace the fingers, and then slide the hand over, let's say to the right. So you're kind of on the right side of your body here. Okay, like that. And then dip the ear toward the side of the body. I said right, I meant left. Classic yoga teacher mistake. <laughs> Okay, so we're feeling it. I'm feeling it all the way from my ear, down my neck, into the traps, down my shoulder. It's really good. The abs, as always, are engaged. They're working. They're keeping you upright. And the bend is only from the neck. And then if you'd like to go a little bit deeper, just nod yes. Sigh if it feels good. Awesome. Now shake it out. Get the blood back to the extremities. Maybe do a couple of these. And we'll go to the other side. So interlace the fingers. Oh, see, this side's way easier, and you'll probably find that too. One side is easier than the other. Relax the outside shoulder. Okay, and then drop the ear down to the side. So the same side that you're holding your hands, that's the ear to shoulder side. Breathe deep, keep the spine straight. Let the corset of your abs work. Just like 20% engagement, but the abs are working to keep you upright. You know, every yoga teacher has a catchphrase, and mine is, everything is abs all the time, because it's true. Mm -hmm. And if you'd like to go a little deeper, maybe nod a gentle yes. And remember, no pain, no pain. Good. And then we'll release and shake it out. Wave those arms and check in. How does everything feel now? Are you ready to get back at it? I know I am. And so, until next time, thank you so much for practicing with me. Namaste. Namaste.